In this video, I'm going to show you how to calculate days payable outstanding. So it's the number of days it takes a company to pay off its suppliers. So a company like Walmart has a large number of suppliers and they don't pay cash for all of their purchases. Most of the time they pay on credit. And we might want to know, well, how many days is it taking Walmart to pay off its suppliers? If you see that one period, it's 35 days, and then the next period, it's 38, and then the next period, it's 45, that could indicate that Walmart is having trouble paying off its suppliers. And it says something about the company's financial condition. So how do you calculate the days payable outstanding? You take 365, the number of days in the year, and divide it by the accounts payable turnover ratio. If you don't remember, the accounts payable turnover ratio is the number of credit purchases made from suppliers divided by the company's average accounts payable balance. Sometimes people will calculate it as cost of goods sold divided by average accounts payable, but it's more accurate to use credit purchases from suppliers. Why don't people usually use credit purchases from suppliers? Because you have to do some calculations. So to calculate the number of credit purchases from suppliers, you could take the company's cost of goods sold and then add the change in the inventory. So the ending inventory minus the beginning inventory. So if there was an inventory buildup over the period, if this number was positive, you would add that to cost of goods sold. Otherwise, it would be subtracted from cost of goods sold, right? If the beginning inventory exceeded uh, the ending inventory. So let's do an example for Walmart, and I'll show you how the, you'd calculate the days payable outstanding. So I've got some excerpts here from Walmart's 10K. So we've got the income statement here, just portions of it. And then we've got portions of the balance sheet here. So we're going to need the following information. So we're going to need cost of goods sold for 2018. So we're going to have that as of the, the end, year ended uh, January 31st, 2018. We got cost of goods sold of $373 billion. We're going to use that when we're calculating the amount of credit purchaser from suppliers because we're going to again we're going to use this formula here and so that cost of goods sold of 373 396 we're just going to put that in the numerator okay and it's not going to be the only thing cuz again we're going to have to add uh, the the ending inventory and then subtract the beginning inventory and where do we get that from well we're going to get that from the balance sheet okay so our ending inventory which is going to be added okay that's 43 billion or 43.783 billion so we got cost of goods sold here plus the ending inventory here minus the beginning inventory okay and the beginning inventory came from right here from as of january 31st 2017 that's the beginning inventory and then we had our ending inventory right here okay so this is how we calculate uh the the credit purchases from suppliers and then we're going to divide that to our denominator is going to be the average accounts payable balance. Now here's our accounts payable. We're going to take, we got 46.092 billion plus 41.433 billion. So we take those two amounts and then we divide it by two. That's going to be our denominator. Now, what do we end up, now remember you have to take this whole thing here. That's the account payable turnover ratio. Okay, so that's account payable turnover. That tells you how many times during the year the company pays off its suppliers but we need to take 365 and divide it by this number here and that's going to give us if you round 42.7 and that's 42.7 days so that means that on average it takes walmart for almost a, a little close to 43 days to pay off its its average uh, accounts payable balance to pay off all its suppliers it takes them about a month and a half now if you did it the other way if you did it the way where you just use cost of goods sold in the numerator, then you would just have 373.396 billion. The denominator would be the same. And the number would be a little bit different. You'd have 42.8. So that, that's 365 divided by this whole thing here. It'd be 42.8 days. So you see, in this case, there's not that much of a difference, 42.7 versus 42.8, but it's more accurate uh, to look at the credit purchases from suppliers in the numerator when you're when you're calculating this.